So the next one, um, factoring. Hopefully you guys can see in this case, we want to kind of ramp up our factoring, right? So hopefully this isn't, since we've spent chapter two, spent so much time doing this, we recognize that if I wanted to factor that as a quadratic, I would give me x squared plus three times x squared plus two. Here, I'm gonna have to factor by grouping. So let's see, I could factor out an x squared, 2x minus three. Here, I'd factor out a positive three. Did I not change that? I thought I changed it. So this give you a three x, or I'm sorry, factor out a positive three. Yeah, no, it would give me two x minus three. All right, whatever. So let's write this factored form here. So the factored form is x squared plus three times x squared plus two. Oh, that would make sense. Do I have some terms that divide out? So obviously, hopefully you guys, to set that equal to 0 to find, you just set the denominator equal to 0, and you'd say x cannot equal 3 halves. But is that it? What about this? What, what values make this 0? Can you guys do it in your head yet? What would it be? Set x squared plus 3 equal to 0. You'd have to subtract 3, introduce the square root. So you have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3, which produces 3i. Should we exclude imaginary numbers? No. The excluded values are only going to be real numbers that make the denominator 0. Square root of 3, i is the same thing as i squared of 3. We write it as i squared of 3 to not, to not confuse the i under this radical. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's square root of 3 plus or minus square root of 3i. 3, 3 times i, or i squared of 3. Yes? So therefore, we're only going to have one excluded value. OK? All right, 